let's go. Um, okay, um, so we're going to talk about service discovery today, and we'll focus on the, um, the client side. How do you use uh, service discovery in Python? Um, I won't argue if you should or not use this uh, service discovery in this talk. I won't explain how to install the three technologies that we, I will cover here. Uh, I will just focus on their usage. And if we have time, which I hope we will have, uh, I'm crazy enough to have done a live demo. So we, we'll try it. Thanks. It's an opinionated talk, okay? So that's my point of view here. Short introduction about me. You can find me on the Nick Ultrabug. I'm a Gen2 Linux developer where I work mostly on cluster stuff and Python stuff. I maintain packages um, related to NoSQL, key value stores, or message queuing. I'm also a CTO at Numberly. Uh, we are a programmatic and data driven marketing and advertising company. We have a booth over there with a quiz, uh, and you can win some crazy stuff, so just come around and we can have a, a talk. Okay, so what is service discovery? Uh, to make it short, you can compare it to what DNS is for your browser, but in a dynamic way. When you connect to a website, your browser first has to find out the IP address of the host hosting the website you want to reach. And to do so, it does a DNS query. Uh, beforehand, when you're the, you own the web, uh, the web service um, and the website, you had to configure the DNS and register inside the IP address of the server, of your server. Service discovery is about the same thing. It's about registering and querying, but for a service. That's the basic of it. Let's see a bit more about it. So we have a catalog that's provided by the service uh, discovery technologies. Um, then you have your servers. Each of them provide a service. Some of them provide the same service. They will register themselves into the catalog. And so you will get a list of service is running at host and port multiple times if the service is um, running on multiple servers. Then you have clients. Uh, the clients will be looking for a service by its name, usually. And they will query the catalog for the given service. And they will be handed over a list of available hosts providing said service. This is service discovery. Now let's take a quick tour of the three technologies I will cover here. The first one is the Heldest one. It's named Zookeeper. It's from the Apache Foundation. Um, Zookeeper is firstly designed as a reliable cluster coordination. It's used mostly and mainly in Hadoop. Um, it has some pretty interesting features, and it's mature since it's, a, it's the oldest of the three technologies we'll cover here. Uh, when I say in the negative points that it doesn't provide service discovery per se, that's true. Um, but we'll get back to it later uh, as to how we can still use Zookeeper to, to, to achieve service discovery. What I mean by this is that it's not a built-in feature of Zookeeper. Uh, the main design of Zookeeper, and it's the same for ETCD, which we'll see just after this, is that you can compare them to a distributed hierarchical file system, which is also comparable to a key value store. You'll see about it. Um, it's written in Java. And it uses a special implementation for consensus algorithm. The consensus is about making sure all the nodes of the Zookeeper cluster agree on something. The Python, Python C bindings are not usable. There is one provided here on the, on the sources, but it's not 
really usable and even worse for service discovery. It's not a data center aware technology. It just knows about its own cluster. Now you have ETCD. ETCD is from the CoreOS guys. Uh, it's pretty recent uh, project. It's written in Go. It uses the Raft consensus, um, which is pretty robust. Um, it has a good adoption. It's used on many big, bigger projects um, like Kubernetes. And it provides an HTTP API to do all the queries and registration stuff. It's pretty simple, really simple to, 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 to implement and configure. Just like Zookeeper, it doesn't provide per se um, a service discovery mechanism but we will use the file system hierarchy to achieve this. It's not data center aware either, and it doesn't provide any kind of health checking of your services once you're registered. We'll see about it later as well. The third one is Consul. It's from HashiCorp. That's the newest of the three. Um, it's also written in Go. It's also using the Raft consensus uh, algorithm. And yeah, I told you it's an opinionated talk, so I didn't find any bad things to say about it because it has built-in service discovery uh, feature. It's data center aware, so you can have multiple clusters of consoles uh, in each data center and they can talk about them uh, between them. And it also provides a DNS API, so you can also look up for services using DNS which is kind of a good feature. Um, the note I wanted to stress out on Zookeeper and ETCD is that we will achieve service discovery by abusing the key value store. Uh, you can see the key value store as a sort of file system where you can sort, store data. Registering is about creating a node or a folder or a file, if you want to relate it to your local file system, and make it meaningful. In this kind of example, at the root of the hierarchy, I will say, OK, the first level is, will be my service name, APAIX. Then on the second level, I will create a folder, which will represent all the, service, all the servers providing this service. So I call this folder providers. And then inside, I will create nodes, or you can relate it to files, which are named my host, two points, and the port. So discovering providers for APAX uh, service is just like listing the content of APAX slash providers directory. Fine. We can do the same with memcache and stuff like that. That's how you can abuse and achieve service discovery using key value store based technologies such as Zookeeper and ETCD. OK? OK, now let's see the Python clients library to talk to each of those technologies. The first one in Zoo, uh, for Zookeeper is Kazoo, ZC, ZK, and yeah, I know. I'm sorry about this. We can be very, a very creative community, I know. Um, we'll use the underscore line uh, one, ZC, ZK, which uh, underneath uses Kazoo. So you can see a wrapper, ZC, ZK as a service discovery oriented wrapper of, um, of Kazoo. So it's pretty, pretty handy. Then for ETCD, we have some standard Python dash ETCD library which is pretty good. Uh, if you use AsyncIO, you have another for AsyncIO stuff as well. And for console, you have Consulate and Python console. Uh, we'll use Python console, which is more um, now documented and more active than Consulate. Last year, it was the contrary, but uh, this year, Python console is very, very nicely implemented now. So good job, guys. Thank you. OK, when you choose a technology, you have to rely on it. 
even more when it will be the core of your whole topology. Um, you have to make sure that you can rely on the Python clients because they re really have a direct impact on your application. So let's see about the ZCZK client library, which uses Kezu. When you want to connect to a Zookeeper cluster, you can specify multiple hosts, which is pretty cool. It has auto reconnect feature. You can query about the connection state. You will get connected or uh, disconnected and stuff like that. So you can have your code handle this gracefully. And it has rich except exceptions uh, if something wrong happens. So uh, I'm providing a quick example here. The don't fail on connect means if no server is available, when I do the first line and wait and try to connect to, to my Zookeeper cluster, will it be blocking? Will it raise an exception? In this case, it's blocking. If you, and you can change this with the wait uh, parameter. But it will raise an exception. OK? So, so it's not for the one of you who are used to um, the Python memcached uh, library. Uh, you have to know about this and handle it because it can block your whole application if no Zookeeper server is up. On the etcd side, Python etcd side, um, you don't have the possibility to connect to multiple hosts, uh, but you have a toggle reconnection gracefully, so it's pretty good. You can't really con uh, try and get the connection state the exceptions are pretty rich, so you can see what's happening pretty easily and catch the good exceptions uh, about the different kind of errors that you can happen to, to be running into. And it does fail on connect. The Python console one is, um, well, not so good as the ZCZK one as well, because it doesn't support multiple hosts either. It has also reconnect feature, auto-reconnect feature. You, the exceptions are so-so. Um, I'm providing a, an example here. Connection error is, well, sometimes not very, very um, meaningful. But it doesn't fail on connect. That means it's non-blocking. You just create your console um, client, and then continue on. Nothing happens when you do that, which can be a good feature. OK, now um, about the service registration. There are three things you have to consider here, three states uh, of a service lifecycle. It's getting up, and it needs to register into the catalog. Then it's running and you have to make sure it's still running. Because if it's not running, it crashes, or your server uh, providing said service becomes unavailable, you don't want to answer clients about it. OK? So you have to remove it, in a way, from the catalog when it's down. That's the dynamic part. Um, and then if we stop gracefully of or if we crash, we have to deregister it from the catalog. So the health checking will also do the deregistration for you uh, in, uh, in case of failure. We'll see how it's done on every uh, Python implementation. For ZC, ZC, uh, ZK, it's pretty straightforward. The main line, uh, the main thing to, to understand is the first one over here, uh, the, the first try accept, will just create the file system hierarchy I talked to you about. So we just make sure that we have the slash EP2016 providers, and we do a make path that will create the whole path, uh, like MKD or uh, dash P. And if the node already exists, it's OK. We can, we can continue. Then the ZCZK provides a, a cool method, which is register. And then you say, OK, on this node, 
on the provider's node, I will register a machine named Yaz running on port 5000. And it will create the, the, the file like uh, node, like Yaz 2.5000 for you. Okay? That's all we have to do. Now, about health checking. The health checking in Zookeeper is implicit because Zookeeper has this cool feature named ephemeral node. An ephemeral node is just like um, that there are like uh, files or nodes in the file system hierarchy that are present on the file system as long as the connect, um, as long as the session of the client who created them is alive. So whenever you the client dies or closes its session, Zookeeper will know about it and will remove the given node automatically. So it's a good way of doing health checking because if your application crashes or you want just to deregister, you just have to exit gracefully and close your session. By closing the session to Zookeeper, Zookeeper will remove all the nodes you created with this application. So the register thing does that. It creates an ephemeral node. So that's implicit in the ZCZK um, Python client. What about the failure detection latency? If my program is uh, kill-9 or crashes badly and didn't have time to deregister gracefully, how long will it take for Zookeeper to remove the node from the hierarchy and then, in other words, how long will, I, will it take for the clients to not be serve my host and port anymore? It will take session timeout here. When I created my client session, I said five. So it will take up to five seconds, in this case, to make this happen. So for five seconds maximum, I could be serving wrong host and port to my clients from the catalog. That's something you have to consider as well in such topologies. On ETCD, um, it's basically the same principle. Um, we try to read the provider. If we can't find it, we create it as a directory. Then we just have to write. There is no register wrapper or something like this. So you, we just have to write the given node I'll talk to you about here. And we can set the data in it. So we will put also the same thing in the value. It's not a directory. And it has a time to leave, GTL, which I'll talk to you right now. That's the health checking, actually. You can see that it's coming difficult here. Why? Because ETCD doesn't have the concept of ephemeral nodes as Zookeeper has. That means that you have it to implement health checking yourself or use a third party library or program to do it for you. But you have to do it yourself. So in this example, I'm doing it myself. So the trick I'm using is, have, is that when my application starts, I have to create a health pinger thread which will constantly, and in an infinite loop, register my service. And that will be a sort of heartbeat or health checking stuff with a TTL. And then my TTL, the time to live of the node I'm creating, it will be removed after X seconds, TTL seconds, from the, the hierarchy. So my failure detection latency is TTL. But I have to have a thread constantly making sure that my node is present and so my service and server is in the catalog. Okay? If you use console, everything is granted and built in. So you can see in the code <laughs> that it's pretty straightforward. Um, I just have to register my service into a console agent, which is as well, very uh, self-explanatory. Um, the name of the service, the address of the host, 
providing it, and the port it's running on. It's integrated, nothing more to add. Um, the health checking is interesting in console because you have a way um, to make sure that the console servers will run some health checks of your service by themselves. So you just have to create, like in my example, it's an HTTP service. So I'm creating an object, a health check object, which is of kind HTTP, and I'm providing the URL that the console server should um, call every two seconds. So I'm telling console, hey, okay. And when I register, I pass the extra argument check, and I said to console, okay, check this URL every two seconds. If it fails, remove me from the catalog. Or, to be very correct, mark me as failing. All right? How do you discover all of this? It's pretty straightforward as well. Um, so I will just show you the querying part. For Zookeeper, you can get the addresses by listing the children of the given node. So I'm listing the children of the provider's folder in EP 2016, and that will be my nodes. I just have to loop <laughs> over them, split the two points, and I get the host and port of every server providing my service. Okay, etcd, basically the same stuff. So you make a recursive query, a read, you get the children, and you split, and you get your host and port. On console, it's also very easy. You query the health service, because you want only to get the healthy servers providing your service. So that's the passing equals true here. I just want you to return the service where the health check is passing, the servers and ports for which the, uh, the health check is passing, okay? And then inside I get a lot of information. It's a directory style thing. And inside there is the host, port, and other stuff, interesting stuff. Sounds good? Okay. Now, let's play. So, I have given three um, Raspberry Pis, and my machine here is uh, running a Zookeeper, etcd, and console agent. So, the idea I had is to showcase a service discovery page like this, where we will be looking for the EP 2016 um, host providing the, um, the, we will be looking for the host providing the EP 2016 um, service. So I just wanted also to, to demonstrate, yeah, okay, that's my, okay, it's here to demonstrate the key value uh, storage, which uh, all those technologies are also used to configuration um, access. So you can store your configuration in these um, key value stores. So your application can also get them from, from it. So the color here, I don't know if it's readable because of the resolution, yeah. Every time I reload this, I change the color configured on each, in, in Zookeeper, in etcd, and in console for my, uh, for my web service. So Dirk, can you start running your, uh, your um, Raspberry Pi? So Raspberry Pi 4 is this one that I uh, plugged in a few, few seconds before. And I can just go to it like this, and you can see that every time that I will change the color on the key value store, it will be picked up by 
the application from, in this case, Zookeeper. And then Dirk just plugged in the Raspberry Pi number one, which appeared and got discovered here by the server on every platform. So if you can, you also plug in yours, and you too, so we'll see the others coming. And what's interesting about this is also like this, okay? It's gonna get hard now. I think my Raspberry Pi 4 gets a bit overloaded here. That's the Wi-Fi, but it's okay. So each time I reload, okay, Dirk Raspberry Pi is running pretty awesome. You see that my Raspberry Pi 4, which is not responding here, you can see that it's not responding. The health check failed for every one of them, and that it has been removed from Zookeeper, ETCD, and console. So it's a good thing, okay? It's working. <laughs> right. Okay, so now we can see Raspberry Pi 2. Okay, Raspberry Pi 4 is getting back somehow. Okay, yeah, it's, it's getting back. Yeah, it's getting back, okay. Uh, Raspberry Pi 3 on console, yeah, it's working as well, okay. Uh, you can't see the, oh yeah, the color now, all right. Yeah. So now we have the four Raspberry Pis up and running, and they seem to be yeah, pretty stable on the health check. Yeah. I will remove, I will disconnect Raspberry Pi 4. Now let's see about the time it takes. It depends on the technology, uh, because they have a different kind of uh, GTL, ephemeral node session timeout, or health check timeout, okay? All right. It's yeah, some of them are overloaded. Do you have any question? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll try to speak up. Uh, how does load balancing fit into this picture? I mean, what I mean is that if you have one service uh, running on two different hosts, yeah. both of them uh, announce themselves to the catalog. Uh, should the catalog give uh, only one node to the client, or should the client decide? The client decides. The client decides. So the question is is there any kind of load balancing? No. The catalog. In the, when a client queries the catalog, it gets a list of all the available nodes for the given service. That's all. That, then it's up to you to decide to which one you want to connect. Uh, yeah, I have a question about redundancy. Um, if you have an application that is dependent on the service discovery catalog, and four different services that that expo exposes, and the catalog for some reason crashes, how will you um, recover from that situation? Will you have like service discovery of the service discovery or uh, how would you do that? Yeah. Uh, no, you don't do service discovery or service discovery. Uh, the minimum that's um, um, advised of servers is three. So you should have at least three Zookeeper or console servers running, okay? So if you want more re resiliency, make, f make it five, seven, but an uneven an number, okay? Always an even number. If something very bad happens and you don't have service discovery anymore, I guess you have to handle it on your application side. You can make it uh, like with cache, caching stuff. It's not 
it's not very easy, and it really depends on the type of application you're running. But the best, best course is to make sure your service discovery cluster has enough nodes to sustain this kind of problem. Well, it depends on the technology, actually. As you saw, if you use Zookeeper, you can connect to multiple hosts. So you don't need a load balancer. You just put every of the node in, th in this. On the other hand, in console and etcd, you have to specify one of those, uh, one of the nodes. So maybe you can implement some kind of stuff on your application to handle this like having a DQ or something like this in Python, and try again in, in each uh, exception. If you, it's, it's phrase is an exception, you can try and connect to the other host, etc., etc. Yeah? Uh, a question about... Uh, I, I think for the recording. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, a question about registration procedure. Yeah. Uh, why uh, don't you want to use external tool to do this? It can be uh, uh, implemented in uh, configuration management, chief, puppet, salt. Uh, and in this case, you will have a possibility to register uh, third party services like MongoDB and so on automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the question. Why not do this as external service for your application? Well, <laughs> I think, to me, Chef and stuff like that are good for provisioning or configuration, um, really a configuration, um, applying configuration to servers. I don't see service discovery like this. To me, it's mo I, I, I relate to your point with MongoDB and, and, uh, and, um, and Daemon stuff like this. Um, you have external programs that do it for you. I'm not sure that, um, for instance, Chef, etc., can have health checks running on. So if you make it with ETCD, it may become difficult to do. There are a lot of third parties libraries doing it for ETCD, for example, because it has a wide audience, and for container stuff like this. And they they use specific third party tools, but not uh, provisioning tools. Yeah. Well, we are using a register container, that a register container that uh, uh, automatically registers any uh, container that is running on uh, Docker host, mm -hmm. and it's it's very uh, good idea. I think it's yeah. it works well, and it's uh, if something happens with container, it will be deregistered automatically. Yeah, but it has to be registered somewhere, anyway. Yeah, so we, we are, having running, a service we are running local agent on each host machine, lo yeah. local console agent, and mm -hmm. uh, each uh, service knows that uh, it can find um, agent on local host, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, agent, uh, only agent knows where there is a um, console cluster located, and it it's can be uh, implemented in very easy way. Yeah, external yeah. Itself. but you, d you don't have central configuration place or you 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 do it also uh, in uh, we are using salt to to, to uh, install everything but uh, actually a service discovery is uh, implemented in using special containers okay okay no other question well thank you have a nice day <laughs>